Last week, uh, we got these new windscreens for the microphones, and, and Miriam had a gray one, and she said, I want a hot pink one. <laughs> and what she didn't know is we had bought 10 of them with multi-colors, and there was a hot pink one, so I put it there, and she discovered it yesterday and sent me a message that she'd be tickled pink to sing this morning. It couldn't have been on a better day because today is joy. It's what they call Godette Sunday. Celebration of joy. Jesus brings joy. And, and as I think about that, that's, that's why there's pink up here. That's why we lit a pink candle today. That's why I went to Goodwill and bought a pink shirt this week for $2.99. I didn't waste my money on it because I'll probably never wear it again except maybe on Joy Sunday. Uh, it, it's probably why uh, Jesse's preaching at a church just over inside of Indiana this morning uh, wearing a pink shirt. Uh, <laughs> It's Pink Sunday. It's joy. Pink is for joy. Um, but let me ask you something this morning. Anybody, what brings you joy? What makes you happy? What really brings you joy? Anybody? Who's going to speak? Raise your hand. Okay, say, say that again. so people Getting are... up every day and being able to walk. I, I agree with that, yeah. Able. Especially getting up every day. Anybody else? What brings you joy? What brings you joy? The grandkids. The grandkids, especially when Cameron is singing uh, Gloria, 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 all the way to church on Sunday morning to it on the radio. Anybody else? What brings you joy? Oddly enough, my job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Carol. My kitties. Your all kitties? Them, Your yes. cats. My cats. She's a all cat. She's a cat lady. She's a she's a cat lady. I I think when I can walk. Okay, that's two people. Thankful they can walk, and now uh, that's that's a good thing to be joyful about. Anybody else? What brings you joy? Jennifer Jennifer's smiling but shaking her head no. Say that. Say say. We we want people to hear it. Be able to get up every morning. Okay, be able to get up every morning. Well, a lot of us are just happy we can get out of bed in the morning. Huh? <laughs> My daycare kids. Your daycare kids, okay. Anybody else? What brings you joy? It could just be a pink windscreen on a microphone. Amen. The scenery that God has made when you take the dog for a walk. And I like to do it every day. <laughs> every day. Does it happen every day? No. No, but you like to do it every day. Okay. Being able to see my wife again every day. She came close a few times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, how, how many years? 38. Hmm. <laughs> You guys have been, what, 43? 45. 45? Yep. Well, that's right. We're going to be 43 in June, yeah. yeah. Anybody else? What brings you joy? Hmm? Family. Madeline says family. Redeeming grace. Okay, redeeming grace. You know, as I've been thinking about different things that uh, bring joy, these are, these are just awesome thoughts. I, I was thinking of things like uh, going out to dinner with friends and having a relaxing evening, uh, looking at the smile of a grandkid, uh, hearing amazing stories of the maturity of your kids from other people. <laughs> Think about that. You're talking about your kids or your grandkids from somebody else, and you go, who are they talking about? Oh, yeah. Well, that makes you feel good. Doing something good for somebody else, that, that basically has been mentioned, helping other people, ministering to others. Seeing a sunny day, especially in the winter. It's been great the last few days seeing the sun, last, or at least yesterday. And already been mentioned, realizing that Jesus Christ came to earth to change everything around for man. Look at Luke with me, beginning with chapter 2, verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. 
an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Good news of great joy. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Jesus spoke often of joy in his life. He was the good news of joy. In John 14, 11, he says, These things I have spoken, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. John chapter 16, he says, Therefore you now will have sorrow, but you will see a, but." you will see me again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one can take from you. You know, I've thought about that a lot down through the years. The joy that God puts in my life, no matter what anybody else does to, to, to destroy life, to, to confuse life, if I really have the joy of God in my life, that joy, that hope, that love is going to continue to be there Without question, without fail, I can always look to God and say, but he's my light, he's my life, he's my hope, he's my love, he's my joy. He keeps me going. Think about that. Your joy, no one can take from you. Nobody can take your relationship from God from you. There's a relationship between Jesus' joy and that of his followers. There in John 16, he was talking about the fact that that he was going to be gone. His disciples saw him rise to the heavens, and then they felt the infilling of his spirit in their lives, the joy that was constantly there. You know, it's good to have good friends around you. Good friends bring you joy. Good friends make you happy. Good friends make you feel comfortable. When they're gone, all you have is your memories. Maybe an occasional phone call. Maybe an occasional note. Maybe an occasional, in this day and age, text message that's the way people communicate but here Jesus is saying I'm gone but I'm still in you through the power of the Holy Spirit think about that an infilling joy that's with us all the time because Jesus Christ came to this earth he's talking about eternal life and they knew that no matter what happened to them they would go to heaven to be with Jesus forever that night there's enough to give you joy. No matter what happens, I'm going to be back with Jesus physically, spiritually, in spirit. I can remember the uh, testimony of the saints when I was growing up. Um, back, back in those days, we didn't have all the different programs on Wednesday nights, and uh, in the summer in particular. During the, during the school year, we had caravans and all kinds of things going, but in the summer... Everybody went up into the fellowship hall for a prayer meeting on Wednesday nights. And, and while all of us kids sat there with our parents bored out of our gourds, I do remember some things from those prayer meeting nights. I remember the singing with gusto. I remember, uh, I remember the pastor uh, always giving some kind of a devotional. But the thing I remember the most is the testimonies of various people, of things that God had happened to do for them that week. I remember one lady getting up one night and, and talking about how she had gone in her, that, that it was a miracle that she was even there that night because the day before she had gone into the kitchen to do some cooking and had turned the burner on the stove and went back on the other end of the house and all of a sudden heard an explosion. The burner had failed to light and she didn't realize it and the phone rang or something and, and that little spark caused that gas that was in the house to explode and her kitchen was on fire. She said, if I would have stayed right there, I may have smelled it, may have died from the fumes, I may not have no realized it, uh, I may have been in the explosion. And, and I can remember her giving that testimony with a smile on her face of how God had helped her, God had made a difference in her life that very week. I remember old Mr. Harris, he, 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 was, he was, man, he must have been about 70 years old. He was old. Maybe he was 80. Anyhow, he, he was hunched over and, and, and talked in a crackly voice, but he always said, I know when I pass away, I'm going to go to heaven. I'll be able to walk again. I'll be able to run again. I'll be able to shout again without this gravelly voice. And their testimonies went one after the other like that every Wednesday night of how God had changed their lives, the things that God was doing for them, 
of how God was still active in their lives through the power of the Holy Spirit because Jesus Christ came to this earth. The testimony of the saints, of the power of God, reminds us of, of His power that is still there for us. Acts 16 talks about uh, some of those saints back in the Bible, and it tells us that here they were in prison, and what were they doing? They were singing. Can you imagine being in prison singing? I, I, I can't even imagine it, but here they were praising God for the situation that they were in and singing praises that the jailers were listening to, being a testimony to God no matter where they were. I can only come to one conclusion. The disciples' joy was not based upon external facts. It was based upon the fact that Jesus came to earth. He gave up his life for them. He defeated death. And no matter what would happen to them, hurt or harm, would not be permanent, and they would go to be with Jesus in heaven in the end. That's what brought their joy. Jesus gave some instructions to joy. In John 16, 23, he said, Ask in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Now, I've heard a lot of whiny versions about this. I, I've heard people talk about uh, all the problems they go through, and, and if God would only answer them, I, I, I would be full of joy, and it would make me so happy. You know, so many times we go to prayer, and how do we pray? We beg God like a kid in a candy store, begging his parents for to buy me this, buy me that, buy me the other thing, take care of this, take care of that. And all this says very simply, the normal version that's here in the Bible is, ask in Jesus' name. Lord, you know what the problem is this week? You know what needs to be done? I'm not going to beg you for anything. I'm just going to expect you to answer the prayer the way it needs to be answered. When we ask that way and we receive, our joy is going to be full because God knows the best thing for us. I, I don't know about you. I, I, I think it's time that we just ask in his name, watch the request being answered, and let his joy explode within us realizing the awesome love and power of a God who really cares for us. Over in John 17, uh, chapter 13, Jesus is praying and he says to God, I'm praying that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Here's Jesus about ready to go to the cross. He's praying for his disciples. He's full of joy because he knows what's going to happen to him in the end. He knows that God's taking care of them. He knows that He's doing the will of His Heavenly Father. And He's just bursting with joy. And what's He saying? Lord, give this same joy to my disciples. Fulfill it in them. Let them be happy in You. Let them be satisfied in You. I look over at Hebrews 12 too. It says, we are to look on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Think about that. He wrote the faith. He finished it. He took care of it. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and is now at the right hand of God the Father. Well, sometimes when joy comes along, there's, there's some pain to get to that place. There's some trusting God to get to that place. But the joy is there. Philippians 2.8 says, Jesus humbled himself. He became obedient. Therefore, God has exalted him. At Jesus' baptism, what happened? God spoke out of heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I am pleased. At his transfiguration, God again spoke to Jesus and said, this is my son in whom I am pleased. Do you see a connection here? Do you, do you see a pattern here? Jesus was obedient to God's plan for his life. And what happened? Joy filled his life. There's a simple message for us, folks. Be obedient to God's plan. We strive for joy in our eternal life, but we struggle to find joy in the here and now. I think so many times it's because we rush ahead of God. We go do our own thing. I, I keep remembering Corey a few weeks ago when he spoke about 
his experience uh, in, in the mission trips this summer. And his whole message was based around stop and listen. We need to stop sometimes and just listen to what God is saying to us. We would stop struggling for joy in the here and now if we would do that. And find that we would have some joy here that would just add to the experience that we're going to have when we get to heaven because we're not going to get to heaven on crutches that way. We're going to get to heaven shouting and praising. Someone has written a book, and, and the subtitle to it was, It's Always Darkest Before the Refrigerator Door Opens. Finding Joy in the Cold Places of Life. <laughs> I, I, I keep thinking about that. The forward to that book says, Life is full of problems. There's not enough time in the day. The kids won't stop fighting. There's too much traffic. And then the bad stuff happens. Friends getting divorced. A close relative gets sick. It makes you want to scream. Don't let life be a stinker. God provided the equipment to laugh and live. God provided the equipment. God provided the way to joy. Here's five steps to joy. Learning to be content. Philippians 4.11 says, I have learned to be content no matter what is going on in my life. Paul wrote those words. I want you to remember that when Paul wrote those words, does anybody remember where he was? In prison. He was in prison. Now, prisons back then didn't have color TVs and exercise rooms. They didn't have regular meals. They, they uh, didn't have medical care. They were a lot of times just a hole in the ground where a prisoner was thrown and a gate was cut across the top of it. And, and if anybody, they were going to get food from any place, their friends brought them food while they were in prison. They could be bored all day long because they didn't have that nice big flat screen TV to watch or, or an exercise place to go or people to talk to. And yet here he is saying, I have learned to be content no matter what circumstances I am in. I keep thinking about that. We live in a world full of discontent. We live in a world where, where advertising is thrown in front of us all the time that you need this, you need that, you need to go here, you need to go there, you need to go do that. And, and we get the feeling that if we're not keeping up with the Joneses, whoever they are, or the Smiths, whoever they are, that something is wrong with our lives. And so we get this feeling of discontent. Lord, help us to be content where we are. Help us to be content with what we have. Help us be content with those around us and, and, and just to enjoy God's life. Um, I, I, the other day I was running the vacuum cleaner here at church and, and uh, just cleaning up a mess that we had made, taking care of some things. And, and my first inclination as I was running that vacuum cleaner was to grumble the whole time I'm running it. And, and 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 God just reminded me of that verse. Do everything you have to do without arguing or complaining. What's the reason for that? So that you may shine like stars in a dark and perverse world. Wow. If we could just be content with what we're doing, with what we have, we could shine like those stars and the world would say, there really is something about this Christianity because they would see joy in our life. Learn to be content will bring joy. Second thing is live a pure life. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, 1 through 6 talks about that. Verse 2 says, We have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do, we do not use deception, nor do we distort the Word of God. Uh, has anybody seen any secretive things this week or any shameful thing? I mean, if you haven't, you haven't had your TV on. If you haven't, you haven't looked at the newspaper. It seems like every piece of news coming out is talking about something shameful, something secretive that was done behind the scenes that is now coming out and, and somebody's getting in trouble because of it. Every time I turn around, I, I, I'm seeing things that are, are deceitful, things that distort God's word, things that distort life. And I'm just reminded, live a pure life. Live a holy life. Live life the way God wants us to be. 
and will be full of joy. Keep your perspective in the right place. Third thing. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God. Well, the first thing I think is, is this treasure. This treasure. The Bible tells me that I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. This is the treasure. Our humanity is a miraculous thing. The fact that we are alive and walking and talking and, yes, be able to get out of bed in the morning, <laughs> sometimes is just miraculous. The fact that we have the power to think and, and to reason is miraculous. We are a treasure. And yet, this treasure that God has put together is, is a jar of clay. You know, they, 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 we're reminded that we come from the dust, we go back to dust. Somebody said that's why they don't dust their furniture. They're afraid it might be a friend of theirs, someone they know. I'm looking to see if you're awake this morning. You are. We are a jar of clay. We're a bag of dirt. And yet it's an amazing bag of dirt. It, it's a treasure. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God. Now I think about keeping things in the right perspective. If we remember that the fact is, the fact that we can think, the fact we can reason, the fact we can go do things is God's power. The fact that we can make it through all the troubles of life is God's power. That should bring us joy to realize that God is helping us. I remember back there in the Old Testament, Moses sent 12 spies into Canaan to check out what was going on, whether they should go on into Canaan, whether there was a possibility of, of, of future life. Two came back with a positive report. The rest came back with a very discouraging report. This can't happen. But the two have the positive report. I'm reminded if we start looking more at those positive reports, we would remember that we serve an all-powerful God. We'd get a whole lot more done for Him. God works in impossible situations to get a possible situation done. Fourth thing, value the right things. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, We fix our eyes on what is unseen, God, for He is eternal. Of all the things we get involved in in life, of all the things that we have, what really is the most important? When it comes down to it, it's our relationship with God. When it comes down to it, the only thing, the only person, the only being that we really need is God. In the end, if we're serving Him, that's where we're going to go with Him anyhow. Some years ago, uh, uh, some people we knew that uh, uh, the, the husband's mother had passed away. They were clearing out the house and having a garage sale. And I remember vividly this, this uh, daughter-in-law of this lady saying, it's a shame that life comes down to a garage sale. <laughs> In the end, Everything we have is going to be packed up by somebody and shipped off. It's going to be sold. It's going to be thrown away. Accept that relationship with God. If we can keep that perspective, we'll have joy. Remembering whose we are. The fifth thing I have to say is, very simple, is out of Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. Well, I think about every day, the things that we get involved in, the places we go, the places we could go that we could be in harm's way. And yet if we're God's people, if we're praying people, He's going to take care of us. Yesterday, uh, uh, we went out to Moments and helped with some things out there at the church out there. And 
went to see Esther and came back into town and did some things here and, and went and walked up and down your treacherous steps. I don't know how you handle those steps, especially if it's icy. And, and as I was traveling around yesterday, and, 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 and first thing I did was walk out of the house and, and get in the car and nearly went flying because, because that ice fog had melted, frozen in our driveway. And, and I thought, wow, all I need is a broken hip. And uh, uh, I, it just reminded me that everywhere we go, we need God's help. Everything we do, we need God's help. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Let Him guide you. Let Him direct you. Stop and listen to what God has to say. And I guarantee you, <laughs> your joy will increase. You see, we serve a God who wants to have residence in our lives, who wants to give us daily joy, who wants to keep going with us everything we do. And, and I'm reminded, I'm reminded this morning that God wants to lift us up. Through His loving kindness, through His watchful care, He lifts us up every single day. Join us this morning as we sing.